Hello, welcome to the barn. My name is Joanne Knight. Today's barn buddy is a little tip in repeat patterns that I want to show you about how to avoid certain areas whenever you're using a trim. I have imported this picture of a quilt block into my project in this design group, and I have another one in this design group. When you look at those two blocks, you might think that they are both the same size. And in fact, the blocks are the same size, but the image is not the same size. When I do a measure with my measure tool on this one right here, it measures 6.28. When I go to this design group and I measure this image, it measures almost 35 inches. So there's quite a bit of difference between the two of them. Right click to get out of my measure. So I'm gonna go back to this one first in group four. In my project, I have several edge to edge designs that I have chosen. So I'm going to put a edge to edge design on this block right here. And I want to trim out the star. And the reason that I'm gonna use trim instead of fill is because these patterns go left to right, left to right, left to right, which means if I use fill, they're going to stitch over and over and over and over again. So in this case, trim is a better option. First thing I want to do is click a boundary. I'm also going to right click and go to image attributes, and I'm going to bring this image down just a little bit so it's going to be easier for us to see. The next thing that I want to do is click out my trim. So let's do that. I'm going to go to draw and draw trim or alt T and I'm going to do just a rough one here. I can click as many clicks as I want to to go around this object, but I'm just going to do just straight lines on this one. When I right click, this is what happens. I'm going to right click again to get out of it. So you're going to be able to see that I can't see if I pick a pattern and put it behind there. I'm going to bring this pattern onto the screen. And this is another little trick for you. Instead of scrolling out and in and out and in and out and in, trying to make that thing fit and then doing this and then going, OK, we've got to move it. Let me delete it and let me show you another little trick. Pattern is selected. I'm going to repeat patterns. Upper left is my point. So I'm going to click the upper left. And on my height, I'm going to put in that measurement that I measured for the image and hit enter. And Creative Studio is going to automatically place that image. This one is not a totally square image, and you see that from the width and the height. So I'm going to squish it in just a little bit. Uh, let's go to F12 anchors, pull this one down a little bit, and I'm going to say OK, because I'm through with the setup box. You see what happens? I have little bitty pieces of trim in different places here, but I can't see the pattern behind this trim. So I'm going to touch my letter I or my letter O on my keyboard, and that's going to select that trim. And I'm going to right click, go down to convert. And you see right down here, one of our options is to convert trim to boundary. I'm going to left click, and that shows me where my actual pattern is going to be. Now I can select the pattern. I can go to nodes and I can pull this pattern. Since it's a straight line, I can have more of that pattern show if I want to, or I can take that little piece of that pattern and pull it in here because it may not matter. Remember what's gonna happen with a trim. Creative Studio is going to stop and tie off at all of these spots. I am holding down my left mouse button and I am clicking to be able to move that pattern around because that way I'm going to avoid some of those tie offs. Let's bring this one in here, pull this one up a little bit, go look at some of the other ones. 
it depends on how the pattern stitches pull this out a little bit to be able to have that filled up a little bit more that area just continuing to move those to where I have a little bit better filling of the space right here just like this pull that pattern in maybe I want it to go around that corner right there pull this one back in now that to me is a better fit this right here whenever I convert this to a trim it's only gonna leave this one little bitty section right here because that's the nature of trim so perhaps I pull that out to get a little better coverage perhaps this one goes right here so you see what I'm doing I'm just manipulating that pattern around a little bit not really messing with the integrity of the pattern maybe I want to pull this one over to this side now I can unselect my pattern go back to my K or my L this time because that is no longer a trim it's a boundary and I want to select just that one without selecting the pattern when I right click it's going to select the pattern because this convert up here on the tool strip converts that to a pattern it does not convert that to a trim you have to go to your right click menu to convert that to a trim so I'm going to do my K or my L and I'm going to right click and I'm going to go down to convert and now I am going to convert my boundary to a trim and you can see that I am much better able to quilt that out without all of those little little tiny pieces so that's how you would get rid of some of those and be able to see make it a boundary first and then convert it to a trim let's see how this one sets up I'm going back to repeat patterns I'm going to click my upper left that's the most recognizable spot on the quilt now remember this one was much much larger 35.75 let's go with that and that covers that area up nicely I'm going to say okay I'm going to right click in the open CAD screen and bring my image attributes down some so that I can see it I'm going to go and draw my boundary just straight lines again right there right click right click to get out of it with this one if my outside boundary were out here on the edges and I had room I could go to nodes this time tell Creative Studio to move this up ever so slightly to go around that point pull this back down same thing with this one on this side that way I can avoid that little bitty tie off right there so this is just a little way that you can kind of manipulate that pattern and make that pattern fit a little bit better for you and go in a little bit different place for you and not have those little bitty bitty tiny trims it may take you a little bit of time but it's going to be worth it whenever you get done with it select my boundary right click convert you see that time it didn't select the pattern the reason that it did not select the pattern that time is because I did a right click in the open CAD menu so when I do a right click in the open CAD menu now it says convert boundary to trim and that gives me that look right there because I did not select in the right click pattern menu I did a select in the right click open CAD menu so convert is in several different places just a little thing that I hope will help you a little bit whenever you're doing some of those trims to be able to see better what you have hiding underneath thank you for joining me in the barn I'll see you next time